This is the new and improved Stelvio, Moto Guzzi's best motorcycle yet. Named after the highest mountain pass in Italy with 48 switchbacks, this bike holds true to its name. It's a corner carving machine while still being very comfortable as a touring bike. And in my opinion, it's one of the sexiest looking touring or adventure bikes I've ever seen. Welcome to MotoTrek. I borrowed this bike from the Portland, Oregon Moto Guzzi dealership a week ago, and it's not at all what I expected. I currently ride a Norden 901 by Husqvarna, but I've had everything from a TW200 to a R1. And the Stelvio, it's a whole nother animal. So the Stelvio is one of the best looking bikes I've ever seen. I'm not just saying that for this review, it's better than all the other bikes in its class, which is the adventure touring and adventure bike segment. Italian designers sure know how to make a motorcycle look good, and the Stelvio is no exception. Somehow they've modernized a classic while keeping the iconic Italian styling. It's got cool lines, cool colors, and it's all based around the focal point, which is the engine. It's like a Ferrari. This bike can make anybody riding it look good. I think it's sexy. I would like to put this on my wall and just look at it every day. So the engine on the Stelvio is different than anything else. The engine's got its own unique characteristics. It's a transverse V-twin. But the coolest thing is the noise that comes from it. It's not coming from the exhaust, it's coming from the engine. And it's something I'm gonna miss when I have to give this bike back. I just love the way it sounds. It's 1,042 cc engine pushing out about 115 horsepower, has plenty of power and pulls hard between five and 8,000 RPMs. But it makes that power unlike any other bike I've been on. It's got character. So the ergonomics on this bike are deceivingly roomy. I'm six foot four and yet I've got lots of room here. And the bars, they're an adventure bend, which keeps me in an upright, neutral riding position. So I'm pretty picky when it comes to motorcycle seats. The seat on the Stelvio is the most comfortable motorcycle seat that I've ever ridden on. Moto Guzzi did a great job with this thing. It's got all day comfort. It's one of the rare examples in this industry where you don't need to replace it. It's actually that comfy. Check this out. Even though it looks kind of silly, that thing's awesome at blocking the wind. It's really useful once you get over about 50 miles an hour. I'm six foot four, and it actually does a pretty good job at keeping the buffeting off my visor. At six foot four, bar risers are almost something I have to do on bikes, but not on this one. It comes pretty much perfect from the factory. Moving down, I'll tell you right now, the foot controls are not designed for size 14 riding boots, but they still work. Smaller shoes or smaller feet will fit just fine. Hopefully you don't find yourself in this situation. At 542 pounds, it's not the lightest bike out there. This bike clearly is not something that you'd wanna to venture too far off the tarmac, despite being branded as an adventure bike. And even though it might seem heavy, that also means it's sturdy for you and your gear. Oh, yeah. Now the user interface on this thing is actually pretty great. This thing's got a dedicated button on your right thumb for switching modes. It also lets you program each one of those modes and tune the bike exactly how you want to ride. If you don't want ABS or if you want traction control, you set that for the mode, you turn the bike off, you turn it back on, it goes right back to where you had it. I love that. This 19 inch front wheel isn't doing me any favors off road, but on road it's pretty great. And I love the fact that it's tubeless, which means I can plug it. The Stelvio really shines in the corners. It's like dancing with the pavement. When I click into sport mode, this thing really comes alive. It's got great wind protection, it's planted in the corners, and it's extremely stable at high speed. There's a couple quirks about this bike that I want to address, and one of them is the clutch. It's hard to pull, and for being a Brembo hydraulic clutch, you'd think it would be easier. Maybe it's just this bike, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you know of a way to adjust it or something, but it doesn't feel like it's squishy. It feels like it's too hard to pull. And the next point is shifting. I found neutral in between second and third, and I found neutral between third and fourth a couple of times now. Maybe something needs adjustment on this bike, but those were issues for me. Moto Guzzi brands the Stelvio as an adventure tourer, but to me, it's more of a touring adventure bike. And maybe it's all just a translation issue. What if we were sold by Moto Guzzi into thinking that this bike was just as much of an adventurer as the Africa Twin, the Tiger, the 850 GS, or the 890 Adventure R, when we should really be comparing it to something totally different? For a $16,000 bike, it absolutely annihilates the BMW R1250 RT, costing 20,000, 
The Honda Goldwing at 25,000, the Yamaha FJR 1300 at 18,000, not only in price, but in the twisties as well. I think we might be missing something important here. When we look at all the areas that it does excel at, oddly enough, it really starts to make sense. It loves the road and at speed, it's pretty damn good at it. The Stelvio certainly has its place in the market. With 170 millimeters of suspension, front and rear, and that same 170 millimeters or a little over six inches is what it's got for ground clearance. The Stelvio wouldn't be my first choice for a BDR or the terrible road into Mike Sky Ranch, but for just about any other adventure, this thing's got the looks, the brains, and the muscle to get you there. Whether it's pavement, gravel, or root stubble. <laughs>